What's up guys, it's your boy Justin here, back with a quick graphic novel review. Since the new Aquaman movie's coming out on December 22nd, I'm not proning, I'm just saying that's when it comes out. I thought we'd review another Aquaman graphic novel, this is Aquaman Time and Tide. By uh, Eagle Moss Production, sorry, Collectives, which p publishes the uh, DC graphic novels in the, in the UK. And other countries, right? So yeah, uh, I got this at the dollar store for five bucks, and holy crap, man! I they need to they the dollar store needs to get a hold of more of these because these are awesome. Yeah, so this collects Aquaman Time and Tide, which was a four issue miniseries, which was published in December 1993 through ni March 1994. Uh, there's also uh, I don't know if it's the whole issue or an excerpt of Adventure Comics 260, which originally published in May 1959, which shows the true origin of Aquaman by the original uh, creator. Which here, it's basically the start of the, the gritty 90s reboot of Aquaman. Where you, you've seen what he looks like in the Justice League Unlimited cartoon. That's where he basically ends up as. But here he just has long hair, which uh, this is another instance of uh, back when they would actually have the person who drew the comic do the cover. Not like nowadays where they'll get a really great artist to do the cover and then like the interior art sucks. So I'm not saying you, you can't have great cover, great covers, but like, come on, man. Like, don't make it so like the interior... Looks so crappy compared to the, uh, you know, the cover. But yeah, so this is written by Peter David, art by Kirk Jarvanen, and Adventure Comics 260s by Robert Bernstein and Ramona Fraudon. So here you get a little biography where they talk about how the importance of, um, the importance of the, the, the story and everything that went on. Along with it, which apparently they rebooted, the reboot the reboot actually s s officially started in 1989 with the Legend of the Land, Legend of Aquaman special by Robert Mormon Fleming. So yeah, the book start the book starts off with us getting introduced to Aquaman, who's writing a biography of his life. And here they retcon a lot of stuff. They retcon that he's not half half human, which was a important thing in the which was important plot detail in the original comics. And the, yeah, so he's been writing a biography where he talks about his first instance as a superhero, where him and the Flash team up to defeat the Trickster, and now he had a bad experience with human dealing with humans because he's been outcast all of his life because his ancestor was this evil warlock with blonde hair and that's why everybody hates him because of his blonde blonde hair yeah so yeah here, here we get the flash which it, this is barry allen by the way but this was a cool panel so yeah, he has bad experience with humans. They treat him like, you know, they try to take advantage of him because he doesn't know much about the ice outside world. They want him... Basically, it's like super meta. But back when meta was kind of new, which it kind of started in the 80s, but yeah. like At this point, he's like, he's had enough with humans, wants to walk away. But Trickster gets angry because, like, Trickster wants to fight him and, like... And uh, what I, you got this cool panel, and everybody thinks he was like the super, the uh, Aquaman was tricking everybody was tricking Trickster. No, no, he was just like you know he was pissed off. So yeah, uh, in the second issue we have Aquaman, Aquaman saving some dolphins from Japanese whalers, which is like the only action scene. And here we find out that Aquaman. Was abandoned as a kid and was raised by dolphins. Yeah. So I yeah I'm not gonna flip through that page. And the third. And the third uh, story, 
Oh, I did not want to show that. Oh my god, because there is some nudity in the book. That's why I'm trying to be careful. But yeah, in the third book, we have Aquaman is who was abandoned by his dolphin family because you know he's growing up and he was trying to mate with one of the dolphins. Uh, goes to Alaska where he meets this uh, Inuit girl who's his first girlfriend. First girlfriend, and then we get introduced to Orin, who. Orin, who is the Ocean Master, was also living with the Inuits. Apparently he's half Inuit. And then we get the final the final story where Aquaman, which you get some pop culture references here. You got the uh, Gary Oldman Dracula. And you have Vincent Price. But yeah, we have this story where like Ocean Master, back, this was like a highlight in Aquaman's life at this point. Until he shows up, Ocean Master shows up, where Aquaman's finally ruler of Atlantis. Everybody loves him. He's a new baby, and Ocean Master has to show up to screw things up. He he challenges him to a fight, and it, here it's like Ocean Master is supposed to be like a surface dweller, pretending to be kind of like Atlantean or whatever. Uh, I don't know what the hell is going on. It turns out he's like half Atlantean, which that half is from his, uh, from that half is. You know, it, it, Aquaman suspects means that, that they're both uh, they're they're half brothers because apparently they both both their moms got uh, uh, banged by evil Atlantean sorcerer, which uh, Mira kind of looks like. I didn't notice this the first time I reviewed it, but Mira kind of looks like Ariel. So yeah, this is the issue ends with uh, you know. Ocean Master gets gets defeated, brings like a submarine to try to conquer Atlantis, but the our heroes stop him. So here we get the true or origin story of Aquaman, which which what happens here is like a submarine is going to blow up, uh, sorry, is going to drop bombs, and Aquaman try uh, go, goes up to stop them. And he's like, yeah, in exchange for you know not dropping the bombs, I'll tell you my secret origin story, which is the origin story from the, the from the first movie, basically. Except for, spoiler alert, Atlanta died in the comic, not in the movie. So yeah, she's still alive. So yeah, we get basically, you know, when in on his mother's de deathbed, she confesses everything and. Arthur's like lighthouse keeper father tries to teach his son everything that he's going to need to know to become the ruler of the seven seas and uh, we find out the reason why Aquaman didn't want them to to drop bombs on that section of the sea is because that's where Atlantis is so yeah so what did I think about this uh, graphic novel uh, I didn't, I thought it was good, the writing was good, but it started a lot of trends that kind of ruined comics, especially in the modern age, where everything's like a soap opera, like the, what action scenes there are are super short, uh, and the art is kind of hit and miss at times, though the, the art isn't too bad, it's just that the art, art w in general was kind of bad in the 90s, because... Because basically, image all the best artists went to work for image or created image. But other than that, it is a good book, but it's it is more soap opera. Like the the best action scenes in the what was it? The third issue is from dream sequences where he fights a sea hag, which might be real, might not be real. Who knows, right? But yeah, other than that, you know, solid read 6.5 out of 10 but yeah i kind of i kind of know why i kind of get why like you know aquaman never got big and it's because you know namor which here's a namor comic which i'm going to review this at some point i paid 15 bucks for this which is like three times the price of this uh where namor is a way cooler 
undersea character. And we'll do a back issue special when it, once once I get more, some more uh, single issues, and I'll explain why Namor is a way cooler character. Basically, he's the, he's basically the Vegeta of comics. <laughs> Alright guys, peace. I'll have a comment call video for tomorrow. Okay, bye.